Let's open up our Bibles to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, and we've been looking at this three-part series. Praise God forevermore. Hebrews chapter 10, and we look at verse 23. Hebrews 10, verse 23. And verse 23 says, Let us hold fast the confession of our hope or our faith without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. Now notice it says, he who promised is faithful. Who is he that promised? That's God. And the word faithful here gives us the understanding of with, is without fail, God is going to do what he says he's going to do. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? That's why hold fast the confession of your faith. What does that mean? Or hope. The words that go out of your mouth. The words that go out of your mouth. Sometimes because of pressure or things that we see, what we say we believe comes out with something we shouldn't say because we speak the circumstance we speak the problem okay and we speak contrary to what god says and god tells us to hold fast the confession of your faith because i'm faithful and what i say i'm going to do i'm going to do for you now you need to personalize this for yourself that he's going to do this for you. Okay, I gotta move it up a little bit. Can they, I know they can hear me, but you all are for recording. Okay, thank you, Deborah. Ah, praise God for ever more. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. So here it says, let us hold fast the confession of our faith without wavering for he who promises faithful. Now we were talking about the power of words in Proverbs 18, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Uh, Proverbs 6 verse 2 Thou art snared by the words of thy mouth And the Bible lets us know By thy words thou shalt be justified And by thy words thou shalt be condemned We're familiar with Declaration of the word of God Or confession of the word of God And to hold on to it And confession Number one It's a genuine biblical principle You see it from Genesis to Revelation God said, and it was so. God said, and it was so. God said, and it was so. That's very important to know. It's a genuine biblical principle. Number two, it doesn't deny the problem or the circumstance. Positive confession, on the other hand, is not a genuine biblical principle. It uses some of the things that are from the Bible, but it's out of context because some of the things that are supposedly positive are entirely against the word of God. And that's how you judge that, okay? Not by saying something that is positive, that is positive, because some of those things that are supposed to be positive are not in agreement with the word of God. And I used this illustration last week. And back in the 70s, there was a movie out called Star Wars. That was in the 70s, and it's still here today. Okay, so everybody is familiar with uh, Star Wars. I'm not giving you ancient history, <laughs> okay? And Christians were flocking to going to the theater during that particular time. They wanted to see the movie Star Wars. And I remember people would come up to me and say, look, you need to go see Star Wars. It's the book of Revelation. Luke Skywalker is Jesus Christ, and Darth Vader is the Antichrist and the devil. So you need to go see it. Now, Christians were flocking to the theater to go see that movie. Now, if you want to go to the movie, just go to the movie. Don't spiritualize it. Okay, just go, okay? <laughs> and... I kept hearing this and hearing this and hearing this and hearing this. Go see Star Wars. Go see Star Wars. Book of Revelation. Well, one time I was on the plane. And when you're on the plane for a long international flight, you can't get off. So I woke up and I looked on the screen. In those days, everybody had the same screen and you had to look at the movies that they would present. And I got up and I looked and I saw the war, Star Wars. I said, okay, I'm going to watch this movie. So I started watching it. 
And then I said, after a period of time, I said, what are they talking about? Luke Skywalker is Jesus Christ. Darth Vader is the Antichrist and the devil. And this is the book of Revelation. I said, what are they talking about? Well, here you listen to the dialogue. The force is with you. That's error. God's not a force. God is a spirit. He's the father of spirits. See, the truth always contradicts the lie. It attacks the lie. Are you all following what I'm saying? So, and then, the things that they said that were supposed to be positive, that people were going around saying, Christians too, the force be with you, and all those other things they were saying, those things were not in agreement with the Word of God. Remember I told you the importance of the, the truth of agreement. Can two walk together except they be agreed? In order for us to walk with God, we must agree with God. If we're not in agreement with God, you're, then you, you're not walking with God in that particular area. And agreement is such a very, very, very important truth because it's violated consistently by people. Because sometimes we will talk about being in agreement, but sometimes people compromise in order to keep the peace or other things and say they're in agreement, but in their heart, they're not really agreement, in agreement. And that's where it must be. That agreement must be in your heart, which is your spirit, because faith comes from the heart. With the heart, one believes unto whatever he or she needs to believe for. Do you all see that? Amen. Sometimes people compromise what they really believe to say, oh, yeah, I'm in agreement with you when I'm not, but it causes a big mess. Causes a lot of friction, causes a lot of problems. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. Turn the person right and left, say, Jesus raised me from the dead. You all are looking at me so very strange. Can you say amen? They, um, they're, um, this particular couple was going to get married, okay? And they actually got married. And the wife was so happy they're going to get married and that they, the husband agreed that he was going to do this, this, and this. So the wife was very happy. But the day after the wedding, he told the wife, those things I told you that I was going to do, I'm not going to do them. <laughs> he was, they weren't really in agreement. Are you all hearing what the Spirit of the Lord is saying? So don't compromise. If you don't believe something, let the person know. Don't take the person down the what well, they call it the roller coaster ride because it'll be a roller coaster ride up and down up and down up and down up and down okay just be honest this is this is what i really believe this is what i feel no i'm don't want to do that you all hearing what the spirit of the lord is saying but some people compromise oh okay yeah yeah i'll do it just leave me alone okay that's what happens well, no, you need to let that person know. That's why we tell people, sometimes people come up to people and say, pray with me and agree. And they say, okay, I agree. They don't even hear what they're agreeing about. <laughs> they just say they agree. <laughs> well, agreement is a very powerful, powerful truth. Keep your finger here a moment, Hebrews 10. Turn over to Matthew chapter 18 a moment, just to see the power of agreement. Can you say amen? Power of agreement. <clears throat> Matthew 18, verse 19. And write in your Bible, power. This is the power of agreement. Can you say amen? amen. And in verse 19, Jesus says again, in other words, he said it more than one time. We don't know how many, but it's more than one time. He says, again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, 
it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. That's powerful. The only thing we have to do is to agree. And when you look at the elements of agreement, if you violate it in the spiritual as well as the natural, you will suffer the consequences of it. This is where you know what those elements are. Maybe go through it. Let's turn over to 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. We see these elements of agreement. Okay? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Make that uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. Underline this because these are elements of agreement. If you're going to agree with someone in starting a business or whatever it might be, don't violate these elements. And sometimes Christians have a tendency to talk so much they don't hear what the other person is saying. Okay? 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. It says, For this reason we also thank God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it. You welcomed it not as the word of men, but as, as in truth the word of God which also effectively works in you who believe. In other words, when you receive the word of God, welcome it, even if you don't want to hear it. Sometimes God would give me his word and I'd shut the Bible. Didn't want to hear it. Remember one time I was listening to a preacher preaching. And he said something on there that, <laughs> that I was doing. <laughs> and I <laughs> turned the tape off, never listened to it again. <laughs> I remember when we were pastoring. We had a brother and his wife. And the brother stopped coming to church. He didn't come to church at all. Okay. But the wife would always bring the tapes home and listen to them. And one day she brought the tapes home and started playing them. And he got mad. He said, they're down there preaching on me. <laughs> now, when I was preaching the message, I wasn't even thinking about him. He had been gone from the church so long, he just kind of left my mind, if you follow what I'm saying. But he said, he's down, they're down there preaching on me. And then he took a great big stick and destroyed his own recorder. <laughs> he didn't want to hear it. He didn't welcome it. See, we must welcome it because it's for our chastisement, our training. Can you say amen? See, uh, uh, chastisement and training from God, it just corrects things. Not sickness and disease coming on your body, you're crashing your car, somebody beating you up, things of like that particular nature. But it just puts you back on the right course. Can you say amen? Well, the elements of agreement you'll see in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. The Holy Ghost is so good. Can you say amen? 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Don't violate these elements. Know these particular elements. Glory be to God. Sometimes in our interpersonal relationships with people, we violate these elements and we have strife and division and fighting and things of that particular nature. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Verse 10 says, Now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing. Now, that's number one element of agreement, is that we say the same thing. We say the same thing. If we're saying the opposite of what the other person is saying, then we're not in agreement with, with that person. If we're saying opposite of what God says in his word, then we're not in agreement. You all hearing that? Now, it's easy if we're going to start a business together and we're both going to say, I have a business partner. We're going to make some money. We say that. We're in agreement with that we're going to make some money. 
and we say it. So we think we're in agreement. But there's three other aspects that are very important. Question is, how are we going to do it? You all got quiet on me out there. Oh, we speak. Oh, yeah, we're going to make we're going to make money. We're going to make money. We're going to make money. But then after a period of time, we're fighting with one another. We're still saying we're going to make money. We're going to make money. But we're fighting with one another. Why? Well, the next part of the verse to tell you, it says, now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together. Being perfectly joined together is being in agreement. Okay? In the same mind, number one, not only we must say, we must think the same thing. If we're not thinking the same thing, we're not really in agreement. That's the same thing on your job. Your manager comes up and he tells you he wants this in this. In his mind, he's thinking one thing and you're thinking another thing and you don't have and you have conflict. Boy, you all got quiet on me out there. You all hearing what the Spirit of the Lord is saying? You see? And then you're going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. He thinks this, you think that. But you're saying the same thing. See, saying the same thing is not enough if you're thinking opposite of one another. One particular brother and his wife before they got married. He wanted seven children. The wife said, I want children, but you don't have to have them. <laughs> uh, they wanted children, but the, what they're thinking is entirely different. He said, just keep going. I I'm a baby maker. <laughs> and the wife says, hold up now. <laughs> Are you going to help take care of these babies? You all hearing what the Spirit of the Lord is saying? Amen. We must find out what the other person thinks. How are we going to do this? But see, we don't answer those questions. Ask those questions. We just go on. We're going to make money. We're going to make money. We're going to make money. Make sure our confession is in Jesus' name. We're going to make money. We're going to make money. We're going to make money. But you need to ask, how are we going to do it? This person believes we're going to do it this way. This other person believes we're going to do it that way. That's why you must find out what the other person is thinking and to see if your thinking is really in agreement with that person. Are you all still out here with me? You like, I, I came from outer space. I got this thing running around on my head, okay? <laughs> but these are facts. This is where certain things don't work. You may feel the anointing and all of that, but you don't look at these other aspects. Are we thinking the same thing? No. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Okay. That you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Underline that same judgment. What is the same judgment? Or do we see things the same way? Do we think things the same way and do we see things the same way? I see it this way, you see it that way. And you're not really in agreement with me. Are you all following what I'm saying? In other words, do we see eye to eye on this? See, the Bible says that you be perfectly joined together perfectly joined together, perfectly joined together. Sometimes God will tell us something and we will go with it, we'll declare it, but 
we see it differently from the way God sees it. Have you ever discovered that in your walk with God? Amen. God says it, yes. We say what he says, but we're seeing the total opposite of what God is seeing. This is where you have to ask the Holy Spirit, let me see what you're seeing. And he will show you. Just simple question. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened. For everyone who asks receives. And always know that God sees things far more exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think. But he will show us what he thinks and how he sees it. Can you say amen? Glory be to God. Very, very important. And the fourth aspect is very important. Is what you speak, what you think, and what you see, your actions must be in agreement with it. In other words, ask the Lord, Lord, how am I to do this? And the instructions he gives you, just do it. Don't even have to think about it. You just do it. James 1, turn to James chapter 1 a moment. James chapter 1. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. Can you say amen? James chapter 1. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. James chapter 1, <coughs> verse 22. James 1, 22. See, the Word of God, the Bible says, first of all, never get away from the simplicity of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay? The Word is so simple. Even if you cannot read or write, you can hear it and do it, and it will bear fruit. You don't have to know the Greek, the Hebrew, the Aramaic language, the historical significance and all these things. You just hear what God says and you do it. It's not the intellectual gospel. It's the word of God. Just hear it. Do it. Can you say amen? amen. He gives us clarity in every area. Hallelujah. James 1, 22. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Says in the old King James, your own selves. That's something called self-deception. You hear what the word says, but you don't do it. That's just self-deception. Okay. Number 23. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, He's like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. It says, for he observes himself, goes away, immediately forgets what man, what kind of man he was. Then it says, but he who looks into the perfect law, the, the perfect law of liberty continues in it, and is a not forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This one will be blessed in his deed. Now underline this one will be blessed in his deed. In other words, you and I don't have to work to make the word work. We just do what it says, and the blessing automatically comes. Do you see that? Very, very important. See, sometimes there's a tendency where we start in faith and we get in works, where we try to do something to make it happen. Whereas the Lord says, just do it <laughs> and you'll be blessed in your deeds. In other words, it will happen because God said it will happen. Amen. Amen. Praise God forevermore. Now, those are four important elements of agreement. Glory be to God. God will open up your understanding more in this particular area, and especially your relationship with people. Okay? Sometimes we have business deals with people, 
and they start out with great friends and then they're fighting. <laughs> you have people who start a business and the business fails. Well, God doesn't tell you to start a business that the, so the business will fail. There's some things that you don't quite understand. Are there certain things you haven't applied the right way? Are you all hearing what the Spirit of the Lord is saying out there? Amen? No. Go back to Hebrews chapter 10. Glory be to God. God wanted to go over this. As I said, some of you have heard this before. But don't get into the thing that, oh, I've heard that before. Oh, I know that before. Because I'll give you the humbling scripture which says, if any man thinks he knows anything, he doesn't know it the way he ought to know it. Okay, that's the humbling scripture. 1 Corinthians 8, 2. Don't forget that one. Put humbling scripture. Okay, here we go. Now, the Bible says, hold fast the confession of your faith. Continually declare what God is saying, has said, and what God has said to you. Continue with that. Can you say amen? amen. Glory be to God. And remember, confession is not legalistic. If you say the wrong thing, go back to saying the right thing. Clear that up. Are you all hearing what I'm saying? And the devil's going to tell you, oh, you said the wrong thing. You just blew all your blessings. <laughs> and the devil's a liar. You're all hearing what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Just get your, your, get your words right. Be careful around the, the people you are. Sometimes you have people who say opposite, and they're not doing it on purpose, but they've been taught that way. They've been taught, and they hold on to the way of the world. This is where we have to fight the good fight of faith. One of the weapons God has given us is his word which is powerful, quick, and sharper than any two-edged sword. That's how Jesus, when the devil was tempting Jesus, Jesus would say, it is written, it is written, it is written, it is written, it is written. He would do what? Respond with the sword of the Spirit. That's the same thing we're to do. Looks like you put in a job application, you didn't get that job. Don't say, oh, I didn't get that job. They don't look like they don't have any jobs for me. Oh, I, I don't think I'll ever get a job. No, don't say that. Just thank, I thank you, Lord, that you supply all my needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. That you give me favor, Lord. The doors of opportunity open for me in Jesus' name. Okay? Stay to the sword of the Spirit. And that takes time because we've all been taught the ways of the world. We've all been taught to respond the way we see things, the way we feel things, the way we think things. We've all been taught that way. Now we have to change that and learn to think what God thinks, say what God thinks, see what God sees, and do, do things God's way. Amen. Okay, we're all in the process of learning. Amen? Amen. Praise God. All right, now. Let's go to verse 35. Because we're going to get into something called standing. Standing on the promises of God. Standing on the word of God. That's a very, very important area. This area of standing. Okay? In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35... It says, therefore, do not cast away your confidence. Cast away means to throw away. To throw away your confidence in God's word. And if you remember, as we looked at the scriptures, Matthew 13, praise God, hallelujah. Good to see you. Praise God forevermore, hallelujah. Amen. As you, you remember that, where the Bible says that Satan comes to steal the word. Yes. He comes to steal our faith in what God has said. God promises you something. You all give your attention over here. Praise God. <laughs> See, while you're looking elsewhere, then the devil's put something in your mind and you forget what, what God is saying to you. You've got to learn to be focused. 
attentive. Can you say amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Satan comes to steal the word. Our faith in what God has said. God gives you a prophetic word. Okay? You jump up all the, up and down. You roll on the floor. <laughs> you run around the church about 20 times. And then the very next day something happens and you forget all about what that word and what you did. Turn to the person right and never say, not me. Okay, praise God forevermore. Okay. Hallelujah. Brother Colton. Good to see Brother Colton. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. That's what happens. Well, when God gives you and I a prophetic word, turn to 1 Timothy chapter 1. Keep your finger in Hebrews chapter 10 a moment. 1 Timothy chapter 1. Praise God for evermore. Can you say amen? 1 Timothy chapter 1. Hallelujah. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 18. Underline this in your Bible or circle it in your Bible. 1 Timothy 1, 18 says, This charge or command, it's a command. I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you. Now, how many out here have had prophecies? Raise your hand. Hallelujah. Only three or four people? Uh, you don't want to admit it right now. <laughs> okay. Prophecies concerning you that have been previously made. Previously made. In other words, you have received these prophecies. And generally, after you receive a prophecy, the devil tries to show you the opposite. How many has discovered that? Amen. Now, you have two choices. There's no three choices. There's only two choices. <laughs> Either you do what the scripture says here. It says that by them you may wage the good warfare. In other words, you recognize that's the devil and you tell him in Jesus' name, go for me. The Lord spoke to me and said this and this and this and this. Amen. That's what you do. You remember those prophecies God spoke on you. See, prophecy is not a part of the, of the show <laughs> or the entertainment part of, 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 of ministry. Sometimes people think it is. This all this entertainment, come on, give me a prophecy. Okay, and they get to prophecy. Remember this particular sister in Taiwan. The first time we prophesied over her, imparted gifts of healing into her life and ministry, okay? And she was so excited and everything. And every year we go to Taiwan, she had asked me to pray for her for the gifts of healing. So I would just pray for her. And then the Lord told me, stop, don't pray for her no more. Tell her, you gave her that impartation of anointing for the gifts of healing 25 years ago. And I said, no, sister, I'm not going to pray for you. I said, we have prayed for you. You've had that impartation of anointing for the gifts of healing for 25 years. I said, why should I pray for something you already have? You all following what I'm saying? Oh, I've been waiting on the Lord. I said, well, the Lord's been waiting on you for 25 years. For 25 years, every time we go to Taiwan, 
Pray for me for gifts of healing, gifts of healing, gifts of healing, gifts of healing. Well, let me give you a revelation this morning. When you must receive the word, when you and I receive the word of God, we must believe it. When you get a prophetic word and you know it's from God, you must believe it. See, sometimes I don't know what she was waiting for. Maybe to lift her up off the floor and maybe she'd fly around the room, around the room and, and sparks and, and things would come out of her hands. And then she'd say, oh, I got the gifts of, of healing now. No. God gives you gifting, but you must develop in your gifting. But in order to develop in your gifting, you must believe it's been given to you. Same thing concerning the area of power. Power, power, where are you? Power, power, I'm looking for you. You have the Holy Spirit, you have the power. But you have a lot of believers that are filled with the Holy Ghost, had all kinds of experience, and they don't believe they have any power. There's right believing and wrong believing. Turn to the person to the right and left of you and say, Jesus raised me from the dead. <laughs> Are you all hearing what the Spirit of the Lord is saying? Very, very important to understand this. You have the Holy Spirit, you have power. You don't have to look for it. You don't have to go to a conference for it. In order to operate in it, number one, you must believe you have it. Remember, with God you believe first and then you see. Say that sometime over and over. With God you believe first and you see. With God you believe first and you see. Because the devil is going to try to cloud up your mind and your feelings and your thoughts with the opposite. Well, 25 years. Please pray for me. I want gifts of healing. I want gifts of healing. I want gifts of healing. I want gifts of healing for 25 years. And the Lord said, no. Don't pray for her anymore. She's waiting on the Lord and the Lord's been waiting on her. You all still out there. Amen. And I know you get a lot of prophecy in this church. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I know you get a lot of prophecy here. You get prophecy when you're not even looking for it. <laughs> Are you all hearing what the Spirit of the Lord is saying? So what you do with the prophecies God has given you, go over them. Number one, look what they say, write down what they say, and declare them. Our good friend, Pastor Joshua, he is a pastor of the church that we go to in, in Malaysia. Every prophecy my wife and I have given him for over almost 30 years, he's written them down. And he goes back over and he shows us, well, you said this at this time, this has happened, this has happened, this has happened, this has happened. And he just goes back over them and over them and over them and over them again. Warring a good warfare by the prophecies that have gone forth on you. You all hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying? Yes. Not, oh, they prophesied over me. What did they say? And then you got four different people, and they say the, t the total opposite of what the prophecy says. <laughs> That's true, we have tapes. I know that's ancient age now. We have CDs. What's the other thing that's new? We have all of that. Can you say amen? 
and listen to what God has said. 1980, I got a prophecy from Kenneth Copeland, and this was at the Long Beach Arena. And I was one of the few people who got a prophecy. And I was way, way, way in the back, and I, you've all, I think you've all heard me share that before, where the devil was trying to, meet, trying to get me to leave the meeting to go eat a hot dog. <laughs> see, the devil will do these things to you. See, they see what's coming in the spirit realm first. You need to understand that. Can you say amen? And they'll try to do things to get you away from hearing what God has for you. They, they see it coming. They know it's coming. Can you say amen? The spirit world is different from the natural world. And he gave me the prophecy. I was way, 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 way in the back. I had on a brown, or no, a reddish shirt. He said, you, way back over there, with that kind of brownish red shirt or whatever it is. Then he gave me the prophetic word. And then the word was, walk upright in the word, walk staunchy, walk straight, and I will make you a great fisher of men. Okay? Now, there's a condition. I got to walk staunchy. I got to walk straight. <laughs> Are you all hearing with the Spirit? Of the See, we never listen to the conditions of prophecy. We hear the blessing. Oh, 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 yeah. That's good hearing the blessing. You know? It's a, but walk up right in the Word. Walk staunchy. Walk straight. I will make you. That was very important. I will do to make you. I will make you. Just like in the book of John when he told the disciples, I will make you fishers of men. I will make. That I will make. In other words, God is going to do it. Amen. That keeps my focus and attention on God. Okay? Then he said you have to walk in the middle of places where they laugh at you, scoff at you. <laughs> Call you and call your names and say, you don't belong in our midst. And that happened. Yes. Yes. Of it happened. But then the Lord says, but you do say it, the Lord. Because my miracle power will make a way for you. So when we were going through consistent persecution for something like five to seven years, I wore a good warfare by that word that came upon me. The scriptures that God gave me, fear not, I am with you. The battle is the Lord's. You see, all of these things, and you declare these things like that. The battle is the Lord's. Y'all hearing with spirit? Boy, you all got quiet on me out there. I, like I want to hear some hooping and howling before I leave here today. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to God. <coughs> before we go back, I want to see some running and some rolling and stuff like that. Hallelujah. Praise God for evermore. Can you say amen? Glory be to God. That's warring a good warfare by the prophecies that have gone forth on you. You got prophecies? Take time to write them down. Stay off of YouTube. And, and write down what God's tube gave you. So you remember them. Study them. Can you say amen? Glory be to God. Sometimes we... Those things are okay, but you have to be careful on those things because you get winds of doctrine. Yes. Some people try to make their church life YouTube and Zoom and whatever it is. No, you need to come together for fellowship. You, you need to be in the presence of believers praying. Praise God forevermore. Can you say amen? The Bible tells us, for ne forsake not this assembly of ourselves together. Somebody would say, oh, but they didn't have YouTube in that day. <laughs> God knows we need to. That Christian fellowship, it strengthens you. That was a thing when I first started out in the things of the Lord. I went to a 
mega church. And the people would go in and there out so quick, I couldn't hold on to anybody, not even talk to, to anybody, you know. But after a period of time, I started getting fellowship. And I had never had any fellowship with believers. I had fellowship with unbelievers, with crooks and people like that. <laughs> that doesn't help my Christian life. Are you, all, are you all hearing what the Spirit of the Lord is saying? Amen. Uh, that's why the Bible tells us, I don't know why I'm getting it. This is shotgun. I'm trying to get into my teacher. You turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 a moment. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. The church was so big. It was people coming in and out. They had two services from one service to another service. All right. 1 Corinthians 15. It tells us here in verse 33. Important verse of scripture. It says, do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. You get with the wrong people, you get corrupted. That's just a fact. Are you all hearing what the Spirit of the Lord is saying? I learned that as a teenager. I would go into a store with other teenagers and they would start stealing. And when they started stealing, they got caught. And everybody was guilty. Are you all following what I'm saying? And I would hear my parents, especially the mother, my mother tell me, don't associate with these people. You're going to get yourself in trouble. Guilty by association. I remember I just shared, shared this in our prayer advance. Sister Elsa, uh, uh, Esther, she's my interpreter. And she has, what, she has three boys and one girl. And the children kind of sit in the back and things of that particular nature. But there was one boy that came that particular night. He was causing trouble. And then they started making noise and I got on all of them. And then I told one of her sons, I said, you do such as, oh no, I didn't do that, I didn't do that. I said, guilty by association. <laughs> <laughs> and he never forgot that. He never forgot that. That had him disturbed. <laughs> guilty by association. You're associating with the wrong boy here. He's causing trouble here in the church. And he was upset, his mother said. And she brought him to me. He said, well, I didn't do anything. And I said, guilty by association. Let this be a lesson for you in life. Can you say amen? Glory be to God. Sometimes you, you get with the wrong people, they can corrupt you. Get you going down the wrong path. I've seen it in my own life. Are you all following what I'm saying? And certain ones, you know, I better get away from. If not, I'll be in jail with them. They'll be my cellmate. Okay. Praise God forevermore. All right. Anyway, war, good warfare by the prophecies that have gone forth on you. Can you say amen? God has good things for you. He's speaking good things to you through human vessels. He's, he's giving you instructions and in teaching you in the way that you should go. Can you say amen? Hold on to that. And always remember the devil's going to always try to show the opposite. Okay, let's go back to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. We're kind of going all around this morning, but God's word is good. Can you say amen? amen? Okay. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35. It says, therefore, cast in not, do not cast away your confidence. In other words, your faith. And then it goes on and says, which has great reward. In other words, God's going to give us great rewards. Can you say Amen. Don't cast away your confidence in God. Now, your confidence must be in the word of God. Sometimes people's confidence is not in the word of God. Oh, I trust the Lord. I believe the Lord. I said, well, what did the Lord say? I don't know what he said, but I trust in it. <laughs> 
You needed to have a scripture. God <laughs> confirms his word. Oh, my friend got healed, therefore I should get healed. That encourages you, but that doesn't get you healed. That got your friend healed. Are you all hearing what the Spirit of the Lord is saying? You must go to the scripture. God says, bring, bring my word into remembrance. In other words, speak to me my word. What you and I are holding on to, it's supposedly holding on to, is what God has said. Now, I'm going to give you an example. Turn over to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. But before we get into Ephesians chapter 6 on standing, praise God forevermore. I want you to understand God speaks to us. We hear his voice. You say, but I never heard God's voice. That's because you're not listening. Okay. It's like my wife bought me this T-shirt. You all saw it. Some of you saw it. And it has a basset hound. They call it a hush puppy on it. It says, I heard you, but I'm not listening. <laughs> And that's what happens. Believers, oh, I heard, but I'm not listening. Different when you're listening. When you're listening, you're focused, you're concentrated on what has been said. Can you say amen? Glory be to God. Well, there's two types of words where God will speak to you. Okay? There's what we call rhema scripture. Rhema scriptures. These are scriptures that God is saying to you. And you must recognize that in the Bible. Okay? Like Psalm 91. Verse whatever it is. You may be reading and all of a sudden that hits your heart. It becomes alive to you. That's what God is saying to you. This is a scripture you must take. You must write it down. You must declare that scripture. And you find out you don't even have to memorize it because it is alive to you. And with that scripture is one of the bullets that you wore the good warfare with. And when it comes out of your mouth, it'll come out with power. Yes. You're all hearing what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Yes. Then there's what I call these specific scriptures. These are specific scriptures that God will give to you. In whatever area you might believe in, whether it's healing, whatever is in uh, finances, whatever area, direction, whatever area it may be, these are specific scriptures. Scriptures that God is giving you. Pay attention to those scriptures. Declare those scriptures. War that good warfare with those scriptures. Okay? Then there's what I call general scriptures. General scriptures are you read, uh, somebody says this is a good scripture for this and this. You declare that. But you'll see the difference between the specific scripture and the general scripture because the specific scripture comes out with power and anointing. See, the words that God puts in your mouth comes out with power and anointing. Are you all still out there with me? Amen. You declare those scriptures. Those scriptures burn in your heart. Just like over in Luke 24, when Jesus on the road to Emmaus, was, he was uh, sharing the gospel. And he said, didn't our hearts burn? Those have power. Can you say amen? You can go and get healing scriptures. 
And those are good to say that, but God will give you specific scriptures when you get in the word and you speak those in his with power. Can you say amen? amen? Hallelujah. What my wife and I have been facing is something myself have been facing is what they call, um, what is it called? I'm trying to think of it. What is it called? The back and the sciatica. Okay. Now, praise God. By Jesus' stripes, I'm healed. He sent his word to heal me. The word of God is healing to all my flesh. And God strengthens my legs. Okay. Now, I had a gym accident years ago. Okay. And the gym accident was one where my gym closed. And the type of gym I had would just had a fan, no air condition. You just sweat, 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 sweat. That was my kind of gym. But then I went, when mine closed, my wife's gym was open, so I went to her gym. That was air conditioned. That was designer clothes. And there were a lot of young ladies in that gym and they were all dressed in these designer outfits and they would get to the machine and they would talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and you never be able to get to the machine in other words you get hot and sweaty and by the time you get the machine and listen to their talking and stuff like that you were cold <laughs> And I ended up pulling a muscle in my back. And it was so bad, with such pain, excruciating pain. And I went to the chiropractor, I went to the doctor, these particular things of that particular nature. I took certain medicine, but none of it did me any good. And I never stopped preaching. We'd have a miracle service. And I told uh, my staff, I said, you can wheel me in in a wheelchair. They said, oh, no, Pastor, we can't wheel you in in a wheelchair. We'll put you in your, in your regular office chair and we'll move you around like that. <laughs> well, people got healed. They got blessed and, and, and everything. Can you say amen? They receive all kind of healing. And then we would still travel overseas to different places, Taiwan, Indonesia. And I remember one time in Indonesia, I got to the point where I had to have a shot for pain. But the shot would only last me for something like 20 minutes at the most. And I was back in pain and I was in a particular situation where I would stand on the pulpit, but I couldn't move. If I move, ah. And we would have miracle service and all kind of people getting healing of this and healed of that and healed of that and healed of that. And, and people falling out on the floor by the power of the Holy Ghost. But I was in excruciating pain. And one particular meeting, we went to Sri Lanka and we were in Dr. DGS's, uh, Dina Karen's meeting, I was one of the speakers in his meeting. And Brother Dina Karen, he had, uh, he had all kinds of physical problems and they would have to bring him up and put him on the pulpit. But great signs and wonders and miracles would happen, which lets you know it's not you. It's all God. And you give him all the glory. Can you say amen? So I said, when I got home, I said, Lord, what should I do? I always ask God what you should do. So we always come up with, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, 6, and 7. Amen. Right. The Lord said, exercise got you out of it. Don't take any more pills. Just believe me. And that's what I did. That's what I did. Just what I did. And the thing completely turned around. All glory to God. Amen. Can you say amen? amen? Hallelujah. That's why trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into your own understanding. and all your ways acknowledge him. He should direct your path. 
And even with the pain, I would just declare, by Jesus' stripes I'm healed. He sent his word to heal me. His word was healing to all my flesh. The scriptures that God gave me to fight the good fight of faith. The devil said, oh, you finished. But you never listen to the devil. The devil is a liar. Can you say amen? Glory be to God. Now, let's go back to Hebrews chapter 10 because I don't think we're going to figure, we're going to, um, we have to stop at a certain time. Praise God. And today we're going to install Marcia as a pastor. Praise God. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And she'll be using the title Pastor Marcia. <laughs> amen. Praise God. Can you say amen? Uh, she's already been, she's already been uh, ordained into the ministry. See, when you ordain a person in the ministry, that's acknowledging their calling. Okay? And... Yeah, the calling of, of, of the ministry that God has called him to. So she's an ordained minister, amen. praise God, but she's going to be a lifeline pastor. Amen. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. And God will speak some good things to her today. So Hallelujah. praise God. And you can, she'll have them. She'll have them. She'll have them recorded and then she can study them and pray over them herself. Can you say amen? Praise God. Forevermore. Hallelujah. There's no such thing as women not being apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastor, and teacher. That is religious tradition. Hello, are you all still out there? Yeah. I remember one particular sister, they told her she couldn't prophesy. She's a woman. She's a woman, she can't preach. You know, and you got places like that. You know, but that's nothing but religious tradition. I remember, like, uh, you got Catherine Kuhlman. She had more power than a thousand preachers had in one room. <laughs> and there were great signs and wonders and miracles. Can you say amen? So, praise God in Christ, there's neither male nor female, nor Jew, nor, Jew nor Greek. Can you say amen? Praise God. Now, let's look at this again. Cast not away your confidence which has great reward. Your faith in God has great reward. It says, for you have need of endurance or patience so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. Now, God is going to fulfill his promise. This is where God tells us in Ephesians chapter 6. Let's turn over there a moment. Ephesians chapter 6. It says, Ephesians chapter 6, we better go to verse 13 because of time. It says, Therefore take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand. And it says, Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Now, standing is after you have done the will of God. God has given you the promise. You believe that promise. You receive that promise. You declare that promise. Can you say amen? amen? And there's a period that is where you receive the promise in the manifestation of the promise. And that in between time is where there's a lot of pressure. It's demonic pressure coming from principality, power, dominion, and spiritual wickedness in, in heavenly places to steal your faith in what God has promised you or to make you give it up. Okay? That's with everybody. Makes no difference. And when you stand, you stand firm on what God has said. In other words, always Find the scripture to stand on. Some people stand on, well, my friend, she gave her testimony. That's good. That's encouraging you. But you must find the scripture for yourself that God gives you to be firm on. God says, 
<coughs> he hears my prayer and he answers my prayer. First John 5, 14 and 15. In other words, you're telling Satan and demons, it is written, it is written, it is written, it is written, it is written. It is written. Are you all following what I'm saying? And God is going to fulfill whatever promise he has given you. And he will give you scriptures to fight the good fight of faith. That's about all I can say this time. Because the timing, we'll maybe get back in it later. But what God has promised, God had promised me that I would preach the gospel all over the world. And I hadn't gone anywhere. <laughs> Remember, God calls those things that be not as though they were. I hadn't gone anywhere. But this is what he said I was going to do. And the result is I've gone over, I've gone to over a hundred nations in the world. In other words, he fulfilled and still fulfilling what he said he was going to do. Are you all following what I'm saying? What we stand firm on is what God has said in his word. That's what you hold on to. You hold on to the scripture. And you can encourage yourself. Yes, my friend got this and this, but you need the scripture for yourself. See, this is like in the area of finances. My God says he shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory. That keeps me looking at God, number one. Number two, when you tithe, when you sow, God gives all of us the promises. You should look at those promises because the devil's saying they just want your money. You won't have enough money. Psalm 23, verse 1, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. If I'm thinking lack, speaking lack, I'm speaking, thinking, and believing the wrong thing. I have to believe what God says. Can you say amen? Be in agreement with God. And we'll have to get back into this the next time we're here or whatever direction God leads us in. But I believe the things that he has shared with us today will cause you to have great breakthrough, great breakthrough amen. in every aspect of your particular life. Can you say amen? amen? See, one of the key things, always look to God. Don't look at people. Because if you look at people, you get goofed up. Are you all following what I'm saying? You and I have our own individual walk with God. And what God will speak to us, praise God, he will fulfill it in our life. Believe it, hold on to it, and declare it, think it, see it, and go forth in the Lord. Can you say amen? amen. Let's give Jesus a great big hand clap. <laughs> hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah.